live in the dungeon. This is the Dream Warrior Review. I'm Kurt Thomas. I'm Mick Strawn. All right. Ah, here we go. It looks like we're good. I are hope we, we're, I are, hope we're recording. Are we are we rolling? <laughs> rolling, 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 rolling. Yes. I was thinking I should get like a backup tape recorder just in case. Yeah. Yeah. And it yeah. was sound really bad. You know what I've noticed? I, I've I've had a lot of interviews lately. And um honestly, in the last month in and I I have done probably thirty interviews in the last month, and I will tell you. Here's the funny That's thing: a lot of three times their equipment didn't work, and mine did because it's set up to automatically record everything, <laughs> right? So it, it's been hilarious because they go, "Oh, they," and I get that callback, that crawling kind of, "Uh, uh, uh dude, you know my um, my recorder didn't." didn't work and uh yeah and i go oh okay well i'll just send you the copy that i made and and, you know the thing that's weird is at first i thought that it was going to be an embarrassment because i really can't even stop my my computer from recording oh that's that's actually it does well it does a really good job it does it without me thinking about it and i've got it going on to a one terabyte side drive right you know so i don't i mean i mean it isn't gonna fill that thing up forever and i don't care one way or the other I, uh so you know i just go into the backup and pick it up and so you're making me feel bad because I, I i owe the you know i just feel so sorry for the boneheads because I, I i forgot to record when we were on their show <laughs> that's right in fact i even <laughs> talked about it i should record this and then i never did yeah and then they need well, a copy you know, the it. weird the weird thing is I tried but they're showing that it's sounding okay. Yeah, I tried so many of them. Yeah. You know, so many of the uh recording things and so many of them are just terrible. We don't even want to talk about the high tech one that I use. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I got I finally I finally found one that does exactly what I want, which is to set it and forget it. Yeah. You know? And uh in, in, well, I do some um, Warlock stuff because I, I have this one and then I have this other one that I somehow managed to use uh, <laughs> uh, two different things at once when I when we do Skype calls and somehow it works. Yeah, and I think it's really funny that, so, that you know, when we have somebody else coming through here, you, you get Rube Goldberg, man. You get it, It's really funny. It's like, well, we're recording over here and and, uh, and you're going to have to put this set of headphones inside of this set of headphones, <laughs> which is hilarious, by the way. Well, you know. I haven't. Well, if we had a better mixer, I, I'm sure I could remedy that situation. Because <laughs> there's a lot of ways to fix that. But, yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I do the low tech approach with a lot of wires and a lot of duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the it's, way, speaking of wires and duct tape, yes, we saw a movie that probably involves some at some point. Probably behind the scenes. Yes, I mean, yes. we yeah. don't know for it, sure. Um, but, so and this they have is, an amazing photo that goes with it. This is the 2018. The Predator. The Predator, yes. Yeah. And um, and to tell you the truth, we are having a mental direct comparison to The Predator. Yeah, we just saw The Predator like a few days ago. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. The thing is, is I have a direct comparison in my head, and um, this new one doesn't do so well stacked up against that classic. Oh. I mean, what do you think? Well, I think this movie was about a young boy who oh, accidentally geez. triggers the universe's <laughs> most lethal hunter's return to Earth. Only a ragtag crew of ex-soldiers and a disgruntled science teacher can prevent the end of the human race. The human race. This is a lot riding on this one. Yeah, well. So I think I agree that it doesn't really, well, I don't know. I don't know what your points are What how, to back up your claim. I have a lot of points to back but up But I think this by itself is a pretty good movie. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It it, it didn't seem to I take enjoyed it, it. It didn't seem to take itself very seriously. I enjoyed seriously. the ride. Yeah. Actually, one thing I like about this is it wasn't, it didn't make fun. So most movies that are like kind of uh, reboots or... You know, they redo a movie. Right. They make fun of the other one, kind of. It makes fun of itself a little bit. Yeah, this was... This a, one was kind of more serious and didn't do that. It which, was much closer to a... Uh, uh, to a uh, redo of the original. Yeah. Well, I yeah. kind of appreciate the fact that there wasn't much humor and there wasn't 
a lot of jokes about the you know kind of making fun of the, itself you know yeah. what i mean oh yeah i don't know if right. that makes any sense but sometimes you see remakes of stuff well, there they, was a, there was a sense of humor between all the uh um, there was definitely a sense of humor you know and especially between all the uh the characters and can you really compare it i mean apples to apples because it was a lot different yeah the, the, the other film yeah yeah i will agree but 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 let me make my points okay <laughs> I, I made my points before you got to. Sorry. That, yeah. L- l- let me make my points. There. Okay. <laughs> uh, this has got all the classic uh, 20, 2018 standards, just like the other one mm-hmm. had all the classic 1987 uh, standards. Um, the dialogue was uh, kind of goofy and, 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 and humorous, um, which both of them were. This one tries uh, much harder to have a, a professional, um, m- more pres- professional effects. Mm-hmm. And I think that it doesn't come off as well because of it. I mean, there are a lot. I, I, when I say that it's got the standard, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the modern standard stuff, there was a lot more uh, optical work. Um, and the optical work was a lot better. But there was also a lot more stunt rigging, and and this is something that that actually has really developed a lot in the two thousands. Um, you see it if you look at the crew. If you look at the crew uh, running by, mm-hmm. you would have noticed that this actually had six people that were just in charge of cables, cables and wires, right? right? Yeah. Uh, so. And huge rigging crews, stunt rigging crews. So if somebody gets hit, they they sail in, off into the jungle, and you never see them because they pull you know? it on a wire, right? Yeah, because yeah. they're they're all pulling on a wire, and and every effect is like that in this. Every hit, every you know, it is super. And, and this is something that we've come to expect. Um, you know, fights aren't. I'm not going to say that fights were realistic in in 1987, but they were certainly more realistic than they are now. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, uh, well, you had more actors like, you know, pulling right, like, right, exactly. pulling their punches, <laughs> pulling their punches people. and stuff like that. Yeah. And in this case, is, is uh, the person gets pulled is the person who's being hit, and he <laughs> and he gets pulled all the way across the. Uh, the set or the location and uh when somebody jumps they jump you know 40 feet and uh right. <laughs> yeah and uh it, it, everybody is a little uh a little superhuman mm-hmm. and and I, I think that i'm not gonna say that that bothered me but it did kind of uh uh sit in my head you know because people are doing things that they just can't do as human beings all the time and and that well there's superhuman strength because they were fighting for earth they had that adrenaline rush yeah well, i, I guess know. that's what it is yeah yeah <laughs> but but at, at the same time i really liked uh, olivia mum yeah uh i i liked her role the one girl yeah like the, the fir- one girl the other one had like a girl the, yeah but this one actually version. had a reason for existing <laughs> she was actually pretty badass and awesome i thought yeah she science was, teacher she, she was badass she she's was like great. my wife she's like a scientist that kicks ass yeah there you go yeah yeah, yeah. what can i say <laughs> um yeah and uh I, I, there's a kid that was in this movie that's a he's a Canadian which this was shot in Can- Canada uh, but uh Canadians. I know shame on them Canadians but uh, what's his name it's uh Jacob Trembley <laughs> and he was in that <laughs> movie we reviewed uh called uh Before I Wake yeah and he was also in uh Wonder right Wonder I, that's all I can think of right now but but yeah, yeah. so yeah, and you know he was great. actually really good in this yeah and he uh, was I, a really important role I think I obviously. couldn't remember either one of those films and I saw them both but or, you know, oh, you know. Well, but yeah. this one, I, I actually had my doubts going in. I thought this was going to suck really bad. I was, I was, so really? I think maybe that's part of the reason why I enjoyed it more. Cause I, really? I yeah. got sucked into the action actually. And, and I, there were only a few parts that I thought were just kind of ridiculous, but I went, went with it. Like yeah. there were some really violent, gory parts that I, I thought were awesomely gory, if that makes any sense. But it kind of <laughs> took away from the, cause I was so shocked by it that I was like, Oh my God, what the, and then I, oh, okay, let's get back in the action. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, but, I, I, I don't know that I was a fan of, of, the I didn't wood- like this much as the first one, but yeah, yeah, I, I just didn't I, like 
like totally it as much as the first one. I, I, I wasn't kind of a fan of the production design of the ship. I didn't think it looked particularly yeah. like this or that or anything. You it know? looked a lot like Thor, the, the ship. <laughs> it kind of did. Because <laughs> I thought that was the first time I saw it. But Sterling K. Brown, I've never seen him be like a, a bad guy, and I thought he did pretty yeah, awesome. He, yeah, he was good. So I got to give him really credit. Good. Like Now, what's it, what's his uh, what's he known for? Well, he's in that this TV is show, right? This, yeah, is, this is, us, is Us, right? Yeah. yeah. So, and, and in which case, he's just a sweetie. Just yeah. a sweetheart. Just a sweetheart. You know what? This one did miss. The other thing that this missed, um, in Boyd Holbrook, yeah. who was the standard bearer. Uh, mm-hmm. He was he, in, he he, was in uh, Hung, wasn't it? The HBO show? Yeah. He was uh, He was no um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Do you know what this reminded me of, though? Oh, not Boyd. I, I was thinking of the other guy. The guy that was acting like he had Tourette's. Thomas right. Jane, Thomas Jane, Hung. but yeah, boy, he. You're right. I had that thought about him. I was like, he's not as as powerful and scary as uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. There's that one scene with Carl Weathers where he like, yeah, they, oh yeah, they do a close up of his, gonna, his bicep. Yeah, yeah. and really, it just, and you're like, why is he showing the bicep? And they, or why are they showing the bicep? And then you realize that they're just. They're yeah, arm wrestling. They're arm wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> but and, yeah, so it didn't have like the same strength and power. Yeah, it didn't. He didn't. Um, I mean, w- but he did a good job showing himself as being a soldier, like a special forces kind of guy. That, right. Right. You know. But but I mean, at the same time, his characterization wasn't as strong as, right. as Schwarzenegger's. I mean, you know, he. One thing I liked about this is that what the first one didn't have was kind of. Uh, buddy like you know you know buddy war films where you have like the group of guys that become close and they have jokes right. and stuff right and they were this pretty generic sure. in the first one but this reminded me of it was kind of like the a team because it was like these <laughs> was it? it was this group of guys that are being chased by somebody yeah yeah, yeah. and then no, they I, kind I of get totally together get that, no. and there's one that's totally crazy you know <laughs> right yeah <I'm> right. <laughs> and he says weird yeah, stuff yeah, you know sure. but i was an a team fan so i guess that, that kind of sucked me in a little bit too because i loved the a team when i was a kid oh so i kind of related oh. to that in that way Oh, <laughs> and the other thing was, I think this I, this had to have been the same soundtrack. So it sounded like very eighties. The music playing, yeah, it, it was, was very 80s. yeah, yeah, it and was. I, I kind of like that because it was kind of a. Well, I think the titles and stuff seemed yeah. to be from the uh, original. I film. think so. Just a continuation of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I like the fact that they were kind of doing a, a quiet callback to the eighties, not really like trying to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like let's just use the same music. Yeah, right. <laughs> or similar music. I don't know if it was the same music or not, but I thought it was pretty awesome, though. Yeah. It, it's, for that reason. I, I didn't... Like I said, I, I, I liked the first one a lot better. Yeah. I, I mean, it really did a lot better. I mean, this one, at best, I'm going to give it a 3.2. Well, the first one, I have I mean, I've you watch it like 40 years later, and you're like, I still love it. Right. So it's That's still exa- great. No, that exactly... <laughs> this one this might not the be the case. Time, this is the first time I saw it, you yeah. know? And, uh, and, and I, w- I was all in. Yeah, I was completely there. Sort of reminded me of um, I, there was something about um, Terminator Two, T yeah. Two, that also had that feeling that you know it's completely and absolutely ageless. Yeah, you know Terminator One, not so much. Right? No, it's Terminator weird. One yeah. just didn't. Yeah, not 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 all that. Not, not only I, I mean, great for starting the series and all the rest of that, but this one kind of felt like Terminator 2 in a way. Yeah. You know? Which is weird because I saw Predator 2 and it didn't hold up really. It was, it was, <laughs> it was in the city and it, it was really weird. And there's a lot of uh, racial stuff going on in that yeah, one. Yeah. Like, eh, and, just... and they were getting coffee a lot and, and, and you know, ordering pizza. And that's, you know, when the monster orders pizza and he's standing there and, and they get him because they set a pizza trap, you know, that's, that's. I think they made him look more Rastafarian in the second one too, yeah. like on purpose. He <laughs> was actually smoking a joint, yeah. right? <laughs> the one thing the second one had going for it was interesting because they had oh. gangs fighting each other, so he was kind of letting people fight each other. It just occurred to me where I've seen where I've seen the, a copy of the Predator Galaxy Quest. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Yeah, Galaxy Quest had the one character that. Uh, Oh. Remember he had the he had the uh, same yeah, Rossifarian yeah. and that same. <laughs> I never made that connection. <laughs> I just made the connection because I that's I weird. just I I just put the dreadlocks on on them both. I was like, oh geez, that's right. <laughs> wow, wow, that's great. And by the way, Galaxy Quest is one of my absolute favorite guilty pleasures. I watch that thing all the time. I mean, I, I have seen it, it and um, the fifth element. 
Hmm. Oh, for right? Yeah. For, for some reason, I will see both of those films every six months. Wow. I don't know why. I I I, I mean, certainly um, Fifth Element is an amazing film. But I'm not 100% sure that um, Galaxy Quest is, <laughs> but... But it just does it for me. I mean, absolutely. Oh, it, I have movies like that, too. Yeah. Just just absolute but, guilty pleasure. Yeah. We should review those. They both fit in our little really? game that, here. That would be great. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> guilty pleasures. I mean, for me, Blade Runner is one that I pull out a lot. The original one. Oh, yeah. 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 But, I, you know, I used to. I, I used yeah, to. Yeah, I don't pull it out as much as I used until to. Until Galaxy Quest came along and replaced yeah. it. <laughs> which 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 that that says horrible things about me and my my sense of taste. I think I might but, have to watch Saturn Three again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lowered expectations. <laughs> oh yeah, this had a. By the way, this has a guy from Mad TV. Well, he's gone. He's done a lot more since then. Yeah, Keegan Michael Key. Oh right. <laughs> I mean, he's he's done a lot of stuff since then. Was right? he in Mad TV? I like how I mentioned Mad TV. That was like how many years ago? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, right. But anyway, uh, yeah. So he's. I thought he brought a lot of comedy to it, and so did the other guy, uh, which I have, Trevante Rhodes. Mad TV, Mad TV, Mad TV. Oh, I did a gag for Mad TV that was funny. Oh, really? Yeah, I uh, um, I was working uh, with Lou Carlucci, and uh, we used to do uh, daily uh, kind of kind of like their stuff, and and we had this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the house uh, that lands in the Wizard of Oz that lands on the witch. Uh, yeah, it lands on the wrong witch. You know, and and <laughs> I think I remember that actually. Okay, and and their feet, her feet, right, roll up. Right, and and literally what we did is we that we put four. Uh, uh, um, what do they call them? Uh, tape measures. <laughs> Inside of the inside of the feet, okay, yeah, and just let them roll back up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they were pinned out here at the end, and and then unpin them and let them roll back up, and then put it in reverse. You know, <laughs> and uh, and and that was inside of a inside of a a, a porn dummy. The, the legs were the porn dummy, so that right. so that we in, super hyper inflated it, left the left the uh, tape measures in the legs, super hyper inflated it, and then just. Put a pit, stuck a pin in it, and then as it deflated, <laughs> and, the, and the great thing is this is is that what you're looking at on your side of like because there's a little flat right here that represents the edge of the house, right? And the legs are out there like this, and you have the you have this guy, this uh, you know, the sex doll with right. you know, all. You're looking down at all the orifices, right? right? And the ah, the. the <laughs> <laughs> you know, for some reason, and this is the interesting thing is is that you you know uh, you would get different ones, and they would have uh, different orifices because <laughs> the one that I, I I distinctly remember this because I did this on set, and and I I was looking down, and there was an or a belly button orifice, and there was a orifice underneath one of the um, <laughs> one of the uh, arms right right, right here so, so that was an armpit orifice and um, there were Weird. a lot there were a lot of orifices on that and wow. then so so we just stuck a pin in in the in the legs and and they rolled back up <laughs> and it was absolutely perfect Porn dummies are very, they kind of prevalent throughout your career, right? Yes. <laughs> you can write a whole yeah, book on I, it. You have no idea. <laughs> you should I, write a book on it. I this. have freaking, I have bought a lot I of them. I can see the cover being I, made of latex. I, <laughs> <laughs> so, the pages are sticking together right here. I don't understand that. <laughs> really? Oh, that's my copy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Speak about copies. Yes. Speak about Let's copies. Did, did you know that I wrote a book? I heard that. Somebody yeah, told me that. That's right. Um, Somebody it's who a, looked a lot like you told me that. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't that many people look a lot like me. <laughs> um, so uh, I wrote a book about nightmare. In, my experiences on Nightmare on Elm Street Four, and I uh, collected about forty-five other experiences from Nightmare on Elm Street Four between me and Blake Best, and um, and and. Uh, 
we added some pictures that you've never seen, some drawings you've never seen, some um, page layouts you've never seen. It is a graphic delight and a cross between an autobiography and an Uncle John's toilet reader. And yes. um, and it is um, everything that you would want in a Nightmare on Elm Street book. You can go to Behind the Screams book dot com and order one for yourself it really is a treat i'm i'm not saying that just because i was the author mm-hmm. uh, i'm oh I'm, no it's worth I'm, every penny it, it absolutely it absolutely is it, mm-hmm. it's it's um even if you're not a fan of, of network elm street you'd appreciate this book well just but you from have to a, see the movie from you have to see the movie but from a filmmaker's point of view mm-hmm. you will learn a or hell just somebody of a lot who likes movies yeah or somebody that likes movies you will learn a hell of a lot because we uh, we talk to people that you don't normally talk to on a film mm-hmm. you know all the way from the carpenters to the production people to the music people uh the camera people uh all the special effects people um you know uh, executive producers uh, all the secondary directors and it, all those stories are there my stories the prop maker stories for it um it, it's it stunt people uh it is really it's kind of delightful i have to say mm-hmm. and um yeah so I'm out there hawking my book. I would describe it as blah 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 blah. blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's very entertaining. Blah blah blah. <laughs> That's right. You've read the book. Oh, you've read it, have you? <laughs> I actually did this on a podcast on the other podcast. I said, "Well, let me read the back of my book. <laughs> let me read the blurb on the back of my book." And I started in blah 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 and blah blah blah, which is exactly what it says. And uh, and they were cracking up by the time I was done. And I was like, well, you know, that's uh, that's what you're in for. That's the go. kind of crap. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of tricks in it. But there's uh, real words inside the book. Actual words, yes, yeah. that you can put together and form sentences and and ideas. I just, yeah. you, you know what? It was I. I just. In those places that people usually put really stupid words, yeah, I put blah 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 because right. you know there you go because I am who I am, sort of I a am what uh, I am. I am what I am. I wish somebody would remake that. I mean, not that Robin Williams did a horrible job, but oh Popeye, yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway. that that village is amazing. Little have Skarsgård, seen, have, have you, oh, <laughs> Popeye. Wow, have you seen pictures of the village now? Uh-uh. I mean, it, it's all worn and. Didn't it, you know some of the houses are kind of uh, used and stuff? And huh. so, yeah. I gotta look at that. That village was amazing. That 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 whole Actually, thing. That movie was pretty amazing. The movie was amazing. Even it though really it got was horrible reviews and everything. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it was kind of one of those things that uh, it it almost needed to be directed by a weirder director. Right, you know, because Tim Burton it, directs Spill Scars Garden. <laughs> Popeye. Well, you know what I mean, because I mean the the visuals were so whacked out, and yet it followed just a very predictable line, and you were like, eh, you know, it needed to go. It it, it needed to be uh like uh, the Life Aquatic. There you go. You know what? I, it, yeah. It needed to be that weird, and 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 it would have been amazing. I, I think it could be done today. And, I think it so. would be amazing. Yeah. So take my idea, people, and, and at least put me in the credits to say we'd like to thank <laughs> Kurt Thomas for coming up with this idea. Without Kurt, without Kurt, yes, I want to add the speech of the the Oscars <laughs> without <laughs> Kurt Thomas of the Dream Warrior Review podcast with Mick Strawn. There you go. This movie would ever have been made. I actually pulled your name up. Oh, really? And told I told them about this podcast, and that's good. I said uh, how how you had a tendency to um to uh. Push me or lead me astray? <laughs> I do that on purpose a lot. I, Have you noticed that? I, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you. You, you know, yeah. I live in this skin, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what would you rate this one? I would give it a three point four. I was, I was saying three two. Huh. I think I'm gonna so go, I, a I, little I, touch I, better. Just yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think you did like it better than I did. I. I. There yeah. was one shot of an exploding body that I thought was freaking amazing. Well, there you go. Yep. I'll leave it at that. Blood. <laughs> That's the point, too, right there. Blood, blood, that was what made it. Blood, 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 blood. Is that the music? Blood and guts, blood and guts, blood and guts. Oh, I thought that was the, the, the third No, that was just blood. That, that was just blood. Sounded like you're trying to do the theme of Predator. It was like, 
you know, a lot of actually, you know what was going on? My my wife lately has been uh, watching um, those old Perry Masons on Channel oh, Two. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, very uh very fifties uh orchestral uh yeah. I think it comes out at like one o'clock in our area. Because <laughs> that's usually when I'm like thinking, I should go to bed now. Yeah, mine's just on, on the channel two app, you know. Ch- Ch- channel two, which is uh is the classic like we get all of the uh really funky NCIS stuff and I'm totally addicted to watching uh, NCIS and I, I mean look I have old person TV habits I watch <laughs> NCIS um, I watch elementary and I watch reruns of the West Wing I am on my like 13th entire pass oh through gosh. the series I, I, I watch one episode every morning Wow. Yeah, I know. Isn't it old? That's old. It you know what? Literally as I'm sitting here saying that, I'm 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 getting the smell of old people in my nose. Well, you would think I'm old sometimes because I watch old stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like I got I got a kick out lately I've gotten a kick out of gun smoke. And I kinda wish I didn't work because I want to watch that show. <laughs> Did you really I, so I gotta find out if there's it's a on lot or there's Netflix. a lot of gun smoke up there man yeah it's pretty yeah. awesome yeah yeah i don't know like festus and you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to talk dan like, blocker my, my wife thinks i'm crazy because i'm like i ain't got no idea like i'll, I'll talk like that sometimes <laughs> and she's like what are you doing and i'm like oh never mind <laughs> i can't i cannot wait uh, i'll tell you i the santa clarita uh diet i can't i cannot wait for the next season to come back i need to yeah, I need to get back into that one. And then also, I Zombie was one that I was starting to get back into. I Zombie, and I, I'm I'm like a year and a half into I, I Zombie. Yeah, I still got some of those left to awesome. go. Awesome. Yeah. So that's what we're doing, all the way around. Yes. And Ned, the answer to your question is absolutely. Um, twice on Sundays. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Okay. All right. Cool. That's it. Thanks for joining us on the Dream Warrior Review Podcast. Don't forget to tell your friends about us, follow us, and of course, like us. We can be found on Podbean, which is an amazing app, YouTube, Stitcher, Alexa on any pod, iTunes, Google Play, we're on Twitter as well, at DW Review, and of course, Facebook. You can find us there. You can also email us at dreamwarriorreview at gmail.com.